Uh, I'm over here in the middle of cutting my hair I ain't even get to do my lineup I ain't even get to shave or nothing yet But then Josina, she just started to drop bomb after bomb after bomb Like, hold up, slow down now But anyway, YouTube, team keep it clean What's going on? It's St. Raven here with another video And obviously the Ravens have hired Monken as their new Todd Monken as their new offensive coordinator Came from Georgia, uh, obviously had success over there um, And there's been a, a lot of back and forth I was definitely going through the comment section of the previous video and a lot of people are for it a lot of people are not for it and then a lot of people are like hey we'll see how it goes and we are obviously hoping for the best no matter what side of the fence you want with the monk and higher we are hoping for the best but uh i did see a lot of people also say all right well uh, i guess that means lamar jackson is out well <laughs> lamar pack your bags because he's probably not gonna want to be here anymore all right lamar we'll see you um and josina anderson her comments on the situation let, let's just read it and then we'll discuss it she said i'm told since the day after the ravens and greg roman parted ways uh quarterback lamar jackson's input on the offense from a philosophical and schematic standpoint was folded into the evaluation process for the next offensive coordinator and communication from key players was welcomed per league source you know us fans who sit at the end of the bar are never never um going to forget this and me I'm, I'm never going to forget comments that i've made for years saying that word that she just used in reference to the ravens and what lamar jackson wanted let's run it back again um i'm told since the day after the ravens and greg roman parted ways uh qb lamar jackson's input on the offense from a philosophical We've been talking about philosophy for years, man, for years. But uh, some people, a lot of people actually discredit what fans say just because they're fans, just because they sit at the end of the bar, just because they never played in the NFL before. People will discredit fans for being fans, but us fans, we can see stuff too. We know a little bit of something. I mean, I don't know too much, but a little bit of something, just a little bit. But anyway, let's continue. Um, so basically, she's saying that Lamar Jackson, um, he let it be known that with this offense, he wants the philosophy to be changed. And I mean, he's like hinted at stuff like that, like for years now. He said he don't want to run. He, he, been, he been said that years ago. He said, I don't want to run. I'm going to be throwing the ball. We've seen games years ago, not just last year, years ago, where Lamar snapped the ball. He'll have a lane to take off. He'll be like, hey, take off, Lamar, go, go, go. He'll be sitting there waiting. No, wait. He'll wait, 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 wait. He'll keep waiting. Sometimes he'll run, sometimes he'll throw it. But, he, like, and again, that, that whole notion that Lamar Jackson has run first, well, you throw that out the window. That's, 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 that's been wrong for, for the longest. But from this, she's saying that Lamar Jackson communicated with them and told them, like, I, I want a philo philosophical and schematic change. I want to change. I want this thing to be different than what it has been. So that would um now it as far as the input that Lamar Jackson had with this new offensive coordinator, this sounds like he may not have had input on who it was, but more so what they brought to the table. That's just my opinion. I, I don't know. But that's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like it was a thing where Lamar was like, all right, this is who I want my offensive coordinator to be. I want this guy. I want that guy. It could have been a possibility where they uh, they they gathered different uh, coordinators and whatnot and different coaches, and they told Lamar, like, hey, you, you that we interviewing all these guys. You down with it? Or they looked at what those guys did, uh, whether it be in college, whether it be what they did in the NFL, and they were like, hey, Lamar, this, this is the guys we bringing in. It, it could have been anything. So to me, it sounds like he didn't necessarily have say so on who the offensive coordinator was. And I don't think any of us expected him to be like, all right, this is the guy. And the Ravens be like, OK, yeah, that's the guy. Uh, I'm sure Ravens took input from him, but not the final say. But I, I think more so they just wanted schematically and uh, maybe philo philosophically, like like she said, uh, they they took the input from him. and was like, all right, this is the type of guys that we're going to go after to be our offensive coordinator. Uh, so you can be happy <laughs> as long as he stays with the Ravens. Anyway, um, then she she dropped another little bomb. She said the the, the term. Oh no, no, you know what? Let's let's finish this first one because I skipped the part. Um, she said uh, communication from key players was welcomed per league source. So I'm sure that's uh, our wide receiver one. Pat Ricard was like, "Look, this what I want. 
These are type of routes I want to keep running, and I want to expand my route tree. Now, shout out to Pat Ricard. I'm just messing around, man. But if, if you get an input from key players, I would assume Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, A.J. K. Dobbins. And these key players, I'm sure they, they, let, they let their frustrations be heard. They let, I'm sure they let out the good stuff and the bad stuff. Because it can't just be all good and it can't just be all bad. I'm sure they let both sides of it be known. Um, but when you see, this is, this is so important, in my opinion, uh, from a leadership standpoint. When you're in a place of leadership, I think it's so important that you have communication, constant communication with the people that you're leading. Because if you're a leader and you just like, hey, it's my way or the highway, that's an easy way to alienate yourself from all, all your guys or your girls or whoever it is uh, that you're leading and whatever you're leading them with. That's such an easy way to alienate yourself. But to receive input, to be like, oh, what do you think about this? How would you feel if, if we did this? What would you think of this move? That just creates a, a much better bond and a much better atmosphere and a much better rapport and a much better chemistry amongst the leader and the people who they're leading. So Ravens doing this uh, and speaking to not only Lamar Jackson, but different players on the team as well. Uh, when it came to the offensive coordinator, instead of being like, all right, this is our new offensive coordinator, deal with it. This is our next guy who we hire and deal with it. I mean, they essentially still have to do that, but get an input on maybe a the type of plays that they want to run, the type of scheme that they want to run, what they want to do more of, what they want to do less of. Getting that, getting that input from your players is very important, in my opinion, because it just creates that much more trust, and it creates a solid foundation with your relationship. So that, that's a good thing. Anyway, uh, continuing, she also said, the determination on the final makeup and tapestry of the Ravens offensive staff will include a collaborative effort between John Harbaugh and new OC Todd Munkin, per league source. More decisions to come soon. So this part to me, it just sounded like, hey, he's the offensive coordinator. So look, I, and, and I, to me, it's, it's just me. I think Steve Bishotti may have tapped on Harbaugh's shoulder. Said, look, you, got, you better get this right. You better get it right. And if you're going to hire him, let him bring in his guys. Because I don't want any excuses. I'm tired of excuses. Let him bring in his guys and, and, and let's really see what he's all about. Because I want there to be no excuses from a coaching standpoint. I want there to be no excuses, hopefully, uh, from a personnel standpoint, too, when it comes to the players on the roster and, and what type of team they assemble. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I, I think it's just, I think that, and again, that's just me. That's just me, my opinion. But uh, I also think it just, it's going to be Todd Monk and him having some power, like him having some real power on offense. That's what it sounds like to me. Not all the power, obviously, because it's John Harbaugh's team. He's a head coach. But it sounds like Todd Munkin could uh, – he could be bringing some guys, but at the same time, uh, some guys may not be retained. My guy Skeptical brought out a good uh, question the other day. He said, oh, man, is it just uh, like a foregone conclusion that um, James Urban is going to be the QB coach forever? And obviously he didn't mean like forever, forever. But I was like, man, that's a good question. I, I, didn't ever, I never thought about that. But obviously, he's been a QB coach since Greg Roman was offensive coordinator. Now, all, Greg Roman has gone out as offensive coordinator. So what happens with James Urban? That will be something to look out for. Uh, guys like T. Martin, uh, Keith Williams, what could happen with them? Um, just really anybody on the offensive staff because they, they're bringing in a new offensive coordinator. So he's going to have some guys. He's going to have his scheme. He's going to have his philosophy and whatnot. He's going to have his way that he wants to do things. And not everybody will be a good fit. Not everybody going to be a good fit. Again, it's like when you, when you get put under new management. When you get put under new management, new management ain't going to click with everybody. And they're going to want to bring some of their ways along. And then some people who are currently on the staff, they're not going to like those ways. Some people will like it. Some people won't. Some people will stick around. Some people won't. And that's just business. So that's what these mean to me. Um, but... We'll see what happens. So anyway, Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. And, and thank you so much uh, for all y'all input uh, on the offense. I, I, I love everybody just giving their honest, respectful uh, opinions about the whole thing with the offensive coordinator. So, again, hopefully Todd Munkin, hopefully he, he comes to the Ravens and just kills it. 
Hopefully he just kills it. Oh, I know they they averaged his offense in Georgia last year. They averaged five hundred yards and and forty over forty points a game. Hopefully, with these Ravens, they can average forty two points a game. So take it up a notch, and they can average five hundred five. You know what? Five hundred eight yards per game. That's a special shout out to Lamar. We out.